The Thirty Years' War was fought in what is today Germany, but the kingdoms of the Holy Roman Empire participated in it. In addition, most European countries at the time, such as Denmark, Sweden, England, France, the Netherlands, and Spain, participated directly or indirectly. And 30 years of war resulted not only in fighting, but also in constant looting, famine, and plague. As a result, in present-day Germany, the population declined by between 25% and 40% on average, depending on the region. In some areas in Germany where the aftermath of the war was severe, the population was reduced by 75% compared to the pre-war period. The 30 years of war was a very traumatic event for the people of Germany. It was a long, bloody conflict that caused widespread deaths, destruction, and poverty. To understand this war, we must first go back to the Peace of Augsburg in 1555. As the Protestant and Catholic camps agreed to the Peace of Augsburg, peace came to Europe, including the Holy Roman Empire. After a long time since Luther announced his 95 Theses in 1517, the Peace of Augsburg established a notable agreement wherein both sides acknowledged each other's existence, even though they didn't formally recognize each other's religious beliefs. The lords of each region could decide which religion would be practiced in their region. Catholicism or Lutheran Protestantism, and those who did not agree were given the right to emigrate from the region. This agreement was reached after more than 30 years of conflict between Protestants and Catholics that led to war. After the Peace of Augsburg, the lords of each region implemented various policies to ensure that the doctrines they believed were firmly established in the region under their jurisdiction. Especially in the Protestant camp, this tendency was noticeable because only Luther's Protestantism was officially recognized among many Protestant doctrines, especially through the Peace of Augsburg. The lords who subscribed to Luther's Protestantism harbored concerns about potential further fragmentation if doctrines apart from Luther's, like Calvin's Protestantism, gained ground in their religions, already influenced by the Reformation. So, these lords were the ones who fought against the Catholics for the recognition of Luther's Protestantism, but paradoxically, they prevented the spread of other Protestant doctrines as much as possible. To curb the proliferation of the third doctrine, each region initiated bureaucracy and centralization, thereby influencing the development of political systems through the Reformation impact. However, as time passed and those who directly experienced the conflict gradually disappeared. Some who questioned the spirit of this agreement began to appear again within the Catholic camp, including the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. For example, Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II banned Protestant worship in Vienna in 1577 and closed Protestant churches and schools. Furthermore, Political conflicts escalated anew as Protestant lords were purposefully sidelined from significant institutions, including the Imperial Council of the Holy Roman Empire. In response to the perceived threat posed by counter-reformation policies, the lords within the Protestant camp established the Protestant Union within the Holy Roman Empire in 1608 aiming to safeguard their interests. In addition, they joined hands with France, a strong military power, 
to confront the Catholic camp, including Rudolf II. This decision was influenced by the French desire to maintain a balance of power and limit the influence of the Habsburgs, both in Spain and within the Holy Roman Empire. Consequently, as the Protestant lords forged an alliance and displayed inclinations toward rebellion, the Catholic faction established the Catholic League, known as the Catalicia Liga, in the subsequent year. When the conflict between the two sides intensified again, a decisive opportunity arose for this conflict to escalate into an all-out war between the two camps, that is, the Thirty Years' War. Just as World War I, in which most European countries participated, began with an incident that occurred in Sarajevo, the beginning of the Thirty Years' War was also signaled by an incident that occurred in one area. In the case of the Thirty Years' War, this area was the Kingdom of Bohemia within the Holy Roman Empire, and above all, Prague. During his rule over the region starting in 1612, Holy Roman Emperor Matthias, along with his cousin and future Emperor Ferdinand II, actively reinforced Rudolf II's counter-reformation policies. Protestant churches were closed, Protestant worship itself was banned, and the Parliament of the Kingdom of Bohemia itself was dissolved in protest and banning of gatherings. Outraged by this action, armed local nobles stormed into the chambers of the Bohemian Kingdom on May 23, 1618. In protest, they threw two of the emperor's deputies and an official out of a window. Although those thrown out of the window fortunately survived, this act against the emperor's representatives was tantamount to a declaration of war as it was immediately perceived as a challenge to the emperor's authority. After this incident, the nobles of Prague began to prepare for war against the emperor. They set up a council to organize an army and prepare to elect a new king. Subsequently, they swiftly turned to the aforementioned Protestant alliance and elected Frederick V, elect the Count of the Palatinate and leader of the alliance as the new king to replace Ferdinand II. As the war commenced, the initial phase saw the Kingdom of Bohemia appearing militarily triumphant. They even succeeded in temporarily besieging Vienna, but this success was short-lived. Above all, there was a conflict within the Protestant camp over whether or not to support the Kingdom of Bohemia. While some Protestant lords rallied behind Frederick V, many remained hesitant to engage in full-fledged rebellion against the Emperor. In addition, there were doubts about the legitimacy of the election of a new king. In fact, before Frederick V accepted the offer of the throne, Bohemia's nobility had already offered the throne to three other candidates, but their position was so precarious that they were rejected. In the end, the Holy Roman Empire attacked Prague with an army of nearly 30,000 men and won a decisive victory in November 1620, and Frederick V fled to the Netherlands. In this way, the King of Bohemia was defeated in the Battle of Prague and Frederick V, who was elected king, fled, but the war, once started, did not end easily. Frederick V was originally elected Count of the Palatinate, which is located west of present-day Germany. Holy Roman Emperor Ferdinand II requested help from Maximilian I of Bavaria to put down a rebellion in Bohemia. 
Emperor Ferdinand II promised to reward Maximilian I, Duke of Bavaria, with a Plodinate, which he had previously ruled, if Maximilian I suppressed the rebellion of Frederick V, the elect Palatine, and drove him out of Bohemia. However, Frederick V had no intention of giving up the Palatinate region, which he had originally possessed, only abandoning the Kingdom of Bohemia and Prague and running away. Thus, the war that began with the throw-out of the window incident in the Prague region now spread to the center of present-day Germany. Frederick V now sought assistance from various European powers to defend his original territories. Among them, there was one who showed particular interest in this request, Christian IV, King of Denmark. Christian IV, who ascended the throne in 1596 at the age of 19, was economically well up after introducing various economic reform policies to Denmark. He was also the Lord of Holstein, located in northern Germany, and on the other hand, he had an aversion to the counter-reformation measures of the Holy Roman Empire and Christian IV had the idea of supporting Frederick V and distributing the estates that he acquired to his son if he succeeded. With this thought in mind, he summoned the lords from the North Germany region in April 1625 and mobilized 10,000 troops and 3,000 horses for the purpose of defense. However, when troops were mustered, he reversed his earlier statements that troops were intended for defense and began occupying nearby German areas such as Borden and Nienburg. This, of course, caused a backlash within the same Protestant faction, and other Protestant lords were reluctant to support him. Moreover, he introduced such exorbitant tariffs as to maximize economic returns, so even regions like Hamburg attacked him. But for King Christian IV of Denmark, a full-blown crisis came for a different reason. That is, a general named Albrecht von Wallenstein appeared on the side of the Holy Roman Empire. He was born in 1583, and after studying in Luther's Protestant area, he converted to Catholicism in 1607 and started military life. After marrying twice for success, he was also in a state of economic prosperity due to successfully speculating. In 1625, he offered to the Holy Roman Emperor to raise an army at his own expense to stop Christian IV. Officials around Ferdinand II were skeptical of this proposal. Nevertheless, Ferdinand II concluded that it would be more strategic to allow Wallenstein to engage in conflict in northern Germany, rather than mobilizing his own forces to confront Christian IV in the southern part of the country. Eventually, in June 1625, almost at the same time as Christian IV began occupying the North German region, Wallenstein signed a contract with Ferdinand II and was entrusted with full authority to mobilize an army of 24,000. Now, in the middle of Germany, there was an army trying to come down from northern Denmark and Wallenstein's army, which had to be self-sufficient as tens of thousands of people organized to stop it. Thank you for watching the video, Religious Tension Leading to the Thirty Years' War, provided by History and Current Events. Gina, Bella, Cindy, Helena, and Tony have contributed so far as narrators. Thank you.